Hello and welcome to Transform Tuesday. I'm Dave McCormick, VP of Product Management here at Alpha Software. And I'm pleased to be joined today by Sarah Mitchell, who's in charge of our, who is our Director of Customer Success. Um, today, we are going to be talking about Zapier integration. So we're gonna go back and talk a little bit about workflow. Now, some of you may know that on our roadmap for the Alpha Transform product, we have quite a few exciting things coming up when it comes to workflow. So you'll be able to build all kinds of interesting things that trigger other actions based on uh, transform related actions. But we already have an integration with a third party service called Zapier, which is actually really, really handy. And today I'd just like to give you a quick example of something that you can do with Zapier and maybe spark some ideas that you can use uh, in your own projects. So Zapier, as I mentioned, is a, is a workflow automation. So basically it's a system that listens for triggers and reacts to them by performing certain actions. And the cool thing about Zapier is that it lets you connect different pieces of software together. In fact, they say right now they have th uh, 3,000 apps um, linked. Actually, I think the number is now closer to 4,500, as a matter of fact. So it has lots and lots of things like Google Sheet is integrated, Twitter is integrated, HubSpot is integrated, uh, Salesforce, I believe there's an integration for. So there's all kinds of things uh, that work. And what's cool about Zapier is it's a completely no code solution for building out or for the most part, no code. There are places where you can actually do a little coding, but mostly no code for doing quite a lot of automation tasks. So today we're going to talk a little bit about Zapier and give you an example. Now, the way Zapier works is you build these things called Zaps. A zap has got it at least two parts. It can have multiple parts, but the first part is the trigger. And the trigger is the event that occurs before you commit an action. So today we're gonna to use an example of coming from a closet and in specifically a supply closet. And if you can imagine a scenario in which you've got a supply closet for a large office, and it doesn't have to be a, it doesn't have to be pens and papers and office supplies. It could be medical supplies at a doctor's office. It could be cleaning supplies. It could be all kinds of things, but these are basically things that aren't regular products. They're not exactly stock, but they're items that get used up. And so it's typically someone's job to make sure that these things are kept on hand so that business can run smoothly. It's also probably not a super exciting job and it's not something that maybe an office manager is always going to have top of mind. They're not going to say to themselves, oh gee, it's, it's Tuesday, I can't wait to go check the supply cabinet. So this is a perfect example where something could be automated to help things go smoothly. And that's what I'm gonna show you in today's example. What we're going to do is we're going to put together a start to finish um, example in which a, a manager is going to get an SMS message uh, once a week to reminding them to go and, and with that SMS message, they're also going to get a blank inventory form that's going to be sent to their alpha transform application on their phone. They're then going to take that information and use it to, which I've built it out here, to fill out which supplies are are needed, you know whether or not they're okay. In other means, in other words, there's plenty on hand, or order. In which case, they need to order more. And at the end, when they submit the form, they'll actually send them back an email reminding them which supplies they need to order. So let me show you how a zap like that would be put together. It's actually two zaps. So we're going to start with the first zap, which is the zap that happens every week. So every week we've set up a trigger and that trigger is going to tell transform that to submit a blank form to a particular person and also to send that person an SMS message to their phone. So to do that, you would log into your zapier.com account and you would create a new zap and you would start setting it up as follows. You start with the trigger event. And in this case, there is a, one of the things that uh, one of the applications that comes with Zapier is something that's simply called Schedule by Zapier. Now, this isn't a third-party thing. This is native to Zapier, unlike, say, MailChimp and the other examples that you saw uh, a moment ago when I showed you all the integrations. So this is one that's built in. It's okay. It's not great. Like, I would like to be able to do things every two weeks, 
every third Thursday, twice a month, stuff like that. It doesn't look like it has it, but if you're doing like an every week, every day, every month uh, sort of thing, this, sh this should be just fine. There is a way using a, an if branch, I'm not going to get into it today, that you could further refine this to say, well, you know, I know you're supposed to trigger every week, but is this, a, is this an odd week or an even week? I'm not going to go into that, but it's something you could do. So I set up my trigger and I told it that I would like it to trigger every Tuesday at 2 p.m. And then I set up my action. And to do that, I went and I chose alpha transform from the list of applications. And then I'm asked a couple of questions. The first question is, uh, what form? Well, the first question is my API key. You would get to that when you set, choose an account. I'm not going to bother showing you that right now. But basically, actually, I will show it to you. When you want to get an API key for Alpha Transform, you can just actually log right into Alpha Transform. Let's pop over here. You know what? I'm going to drop off camera here. So I'm going to save a little bandwidth. And we're going to go to, let me make this bigger. And we're going to go into the home tab of Alpha Transform. And I'm going to scroll down to where it says get API keys. I'm going to click on get API key. And then I'm asked how much permissions should my API, P, API key be given. In this case, I'm going to choose all. I think I would probably only have to do create uh, form instances might be the minimum that you could get away with here. Uh, so what all I do is I, I select the uh, level of permissions I'm going to give it. I click uh, get API key. An API key is displayed on the screen. I copy it and then I'll paste it into my Zapier account. So meanwhile, back at Zapier, after I've done that, it now knows what my account is. So it knows what forms are in my account. And I've set up a form called TT Supply Closet. It was the one that I showed you right here. It just basically has a field for each one of the things that I want to keep track of in my supply closet. All right. Once that's done, I need to tell it uh, which form and I need to say uh, to whom it should be submitted. So I've decided in this case to just hard code it to me, but I didn't have to. I could have, for example, um, uh, use some other value or some sort of calculated value to figure out who it's going to go to. In this example, it's probably almost always going to go to the same person each time. So you may as well hard code it. Now, the next thing you'll see, and I don't show you the whole screen because it actually goes down in quite a ways here, is that you could actually set default values for the form fields in your form. But we've chosen not to do that. What we're doing is we want to send out a blank inventory form. So we're going to leave the rest of those blank. And with that, we finished setting up the action for submitting to transform. Next up though, I wanna let people know that that form is ready for them. So I'm gonna choose another built-in um, thing from Zapier called SMS by Zapier. With this SMS by Zapier, what it does is, as you can imagine, it sends an SMS message. And I've configured that, oops, I've configured that just to send a static message I could have actually taken data from Transformers or some other place and formatted that message and added data and made it smart. But really all I needed to do is have it send out an SMS message, letting the person know that they have a new supply form that they need to fill out. So when I set that up and I hit continue, actually this is a screenshot from my phone. I did this uh, yesterday, yesterday. And you'll see I got an, an SMS message which says that you have a new supply form. So now I know to go into my Alpha Transform and fill out the form. So when I open up Alpha Transform, that form is now there. And when I open it up, I can just go ahead and just tap the buttons to indicate whether or not things are in stock or not. And then when that's done, I'm going to click Submit. And when it submits back to Transform, I have another trigger. Now, you might be familiar with the on submit events, which are built into Alpha Transform. Those let you send emails and SMS messages and some other things as well, perform send reports. Um, but right now at this moment, and this is January, 2022, setting them up is a little bit tricky because you have to create a JSON string. Now you could do that using our free companion product, Alpha Anywhere, to do that, to set that up. But Zapier just makes it much, much easier. There's no, it's just a, a much simpler process. 
we are in the middle of making that much easier. So look for that in the future. You may not choose to use Zapier for this sort of thing maybe in a month or two, but this is this is still a very good way to go. So I, I sent an out, outbound email, and when I sent that outbound email, I had some choices that I need to fill in, one of which is, of course, who is it going to go to? And in this case, I actually did choose a field from Transform. I chose the metadata person field. That's the person to whom the form was assigned, and that's the person to whom we want to send the email. The next thing I wanted to enter in was a subject, so I just typed in supply status. Again, that could be calculated if I wanted to. And then down here where it says the body HTML, this is where I just create the body of the email. And when I'm doing that, you'll see it has selections for each one of those fields that I had created early in my transform form. So all I did was I just wrote black fine point pen, for example, and I added the black uh, fine point field to the list and I just went down through each of them. Now I only did four, I didn't do all 20. But what happened was when I ended up uh, submitting that form, you'll see that uh, Zapier saw that the form was submitted and it sent me out an email address with my formatted data. So that was it. That's all it takes to put together a workflow using Zapier and Alpha Anywhere. And it was a rather short session this week, but do we have any questions? too many nope no questions at all well no problem with that if you do have questions you could always send them to tf service at alpha software.com i'm fortunate enough to be away on vacation although i'm going to miss you guys terribly so i'm not going to be here for the next two transform tuesdays when we return we have two more two exciting ones coming up one which has to do with targets which lets you automate your forms and the other is going to be a return to the internet of things where i show you how to use the raspberry pi finally to submit data to transform as part of an IoT uh, install. So until then, thanks very much. Hope to see you in three weeks, our next Transform Tuesday. Take care and stay well. Bye-bye.